Hi, I'm Susan Petty. I'm a teacher specialist with the Child Find program and work with our birth to five population. And we wanted to get together today to talk about universal visual supports for young children. So today we wanted to talk about why we use visual supports, how we use them, and where can we find visual supports or how can we access those uh, to help our children in the home setting. So many of our young children have difficulty processing language and visual supports are a constant reminder of what it is we've told them or what it is we'd like them to do. So visual supports are communication tools that can include pictures, drawings, photographs or objects. And these tools can help our children throughout their day, uh, help them with their communication skills, help them understand what it is we want them to do. And it can also help them increase their receptive and expressive language, develop social skills, and also help them to be more independent in the home setting. Um, so these visual supports are very powerful tools. You've heard a picture's worth a thousand words. That's what we're gonna show today. Um, most of our children do learn from looking and watching, and they are visual learners. So today we're gonna take a look at how these visual supports can help children in the home setting. All right, so visual supports help children understand rules and expectations and those daily routines, what it is we want them to do. So one of the things we can use is a visual cue card, which is really just a picture of what we want a child to do. Wash your hands. Um, as you're saying the direction and you're showing them the picture, that's helping them to understand and remember what it is they need to do. Another step, take it even a little further, is you can take that picture, a second picture, and put it right by the sink so they can match what you've given them to do with where they need to do it. You can also use cue, picture cues for tasks to show the steps and to help them learn the steps for daily routines. So for example, let's get dressed. Rather than just saying it's time to get dressed, we're showing them the sequence of what they need to do. Put on your underwear, put your shorts on, t-shirt, socks, shoes. As you're teaching this to children, you can start to play a little game with it. Cover up the first two. Do you remember what are the first, what's the first two things we put on? And then maybe cover up a third one and get to the point where the whole thing's covered up and see if they can verbally tell you what it is they're supposed to do. So it's provided that visual cue, but it's also a way to teach them the task and allow them a chance to rehearse it. Stop and wait are two really very important concepts for our children to learn. Stop can be a safety concept. When I say stop, you need to freeze. Um, you know, if we're getting out of the car, if we're standing by a busy road, um, even in the house when we're not ready to leave yet. So you can practice using the cue, the visual cue for stop, um, and you can get several of them, put them around like a little like a little obstacle course and then you take a walk, stop and practice freezing and then reinforce, give them praise for what a good job they've done. Um, along with stop, once you stop, also learning to wait. So helping children learn to wait is a very helpful tool in the home setting. There's a lot of times you're gonna need a few minutes to get something done. Um, one of the ways you can teach children to wait is to use a timer and we're gonna show some timers in a minute, but Start very short, wait for 20 seconds. All right, good job. Using that word and showing them that visual cue or even just putting your hand up. Um, sometimes if mom or dad have something they need to get done, we've made little wait boxes for our children, which is a box I give you only when I need you to wait for a little bit. And inside might be some little toys, uh, maybe a little scribble pad, something that they like to play with that's very short. Um, and we only get it out when I need to do something, I need you to wait. And it starts to teach that concept of delaying what they want while you get something done. Visual supports can also be used for different activities um, to help children communicate their thoughts, feelings, needs, and wants. So what is it you want? Sometimes that can cause a lot of frustration for children when they're trying to communicate what they want and the adult 
does not understand. So providing some pictures for snacks they like, activities they want to do, toys they'd like to play with, allows them the opportunity to point and practice saying. And so it will commun increase that communication skill. Um, the goal is to also allow them to become independent. Um, so rather than uh, you trying to guess what they want, they would be able to actually communicate that. Um, and, and communicate their feelings. This is really something that we are focusing on in our preschool education programs, helping children identify their feelings. Most of our pre-K classes have this feelings chart inside their classroom. Um, and children check in as they go. How are you feeling today? Um, for some of our children, we really need to teach what those feelings are. Um, and if you have one of these charts at home, you can help your child share how their feelings are changing through the day. Because if we're feeling sad or mad or frustrated, what can we do? What are the tools to get us back to feeling happy? So it can be used in that way too. Routines in the home can eliminate anxiety and help children know what to expect. And schedules are a way to help children navigate those transitions throughout the day. This is an example of a morning schedule. I wake up, I get dressed, I eat breakfast, I brush my teeth, or perhaps what we're doing for the day. We're going to get dressed, we're going to eat breakfast, you may have to take a bath before we go shopping, we'll read a book and go to bed. Um, if you notice these schedules are, work, we work left to right, top to bottom, which reinforces literacy skills because we read left to right, top to bottom. Something as simple as this little task schedule can help a child understand how many things we need to do before we're able to move to a preferred activity. So we wanna go outside to play, we have three things we need to do. We may need to clean up our toys, get our coat on, get our shoes on, and we can remove these counters as those tasks are being completed. You can also replace those counters with numbers, which would reinforce math skills. You can count up, you can count back um, and you can put numbers one to five. That five frame is one of the first things we start using with our preschool friends for math. Um, so it reinforces those early learning skills as well as helping children with schedules. First then is another visual to tool we can use. And obviously you can just draw two boxes with an arrow in it, uh, but the idea is pairing a prefer, non-preferred task with a preferred task. For example, first I get dressed, then I go outside. Um, using these visuals can be very powerful, especially when children are protesting. You know, I, I don't want to get dressed. I just want to go outside. These visuals take some of that, that heat off of you. You just stay calm, limit the amount of verbal information, which can sometimes escalate children, get dressed, first get dressed, then we'll go outside. And you stick to it and it can become a very powerful tool. First clean up, then we'll have our snack. So we talked a little bit before about timers. Timers are a great tool to help, to help children understand that there's a time expectation with compliance. We may say it's time to clean up the toys, but we really don't mean for it to take an hour. Uh, we may say it's time to get dressed, but we don't expect that to be half of our morning. So setting a timer can sometimes be like a game with a child. I'm gonna set the timer. Let's see if we can get the toys all cleaned up before the timer goes off. Um, for the, We also can use those little egg timers that you can get um, on Amazon. Um, and those timers with the sand in them, when you flip them over, if children have trouble understanding numbers, those are, something that you can use as well. Those timers also really help with learning how to wait. Um, and you can use cues, cards, visual cues to help children learn to take turns. Um, you could replace this little cartoon character with your child's picture. Um, and then as you're teaching how to take turns, you can use this card to with an adult facilitating. So you're sitting with the children, you have the card in front of your child. It says my turn. He's looking at it or she's looking at it. But then when it's the peer's turn, you flip it over. Not my turn anymore. Oh, turn it back over. Now it's my turn. 
Visual supports can also help young children understand how to interact with each other. And we have a lot of different social stories. If you look up, if you Google social stories, you'll come up with a million on the, on the internet. There's so many of them, but I am gonna show you a place to find some at the end of our presentation. Um, but a social story helps children target specific social behaviors and explains why certain behaviors are inappropriate. What, so what does I need to do? Um, and why is that the action I need to take? For example, <clears throat> and they're very short. We may have one about hitting. And it may sound um, sometimes when I feel mad, I hit my friends. Hitting hurts my family and friends. I can say I'm mad. <clears throat> I can stop and tuck, which is the story right here when I'm mad. I will have gentle hands. My family and friends will like it when I use my words and have gentle hands. And you read that to your child to help them understand that that social behavior. But then you also reread it to them when the behavior comes up. When they next time they hit a friend, we read the story again and it helps to reinforce not only what I what's inappropriate, but also what do I do? Because we need to give children tools of what do I, what is it I will do when I'm mad? Because it's okay to be mad, but it's not okay to hit your friends. And that's what we're teaching. We also have some visual supports that can help children with their challenging behaviors to calm. We often use these in school and they could be used at home as well with the choices of what I can do when I'm mad um, and different ways I can calm myself. When you introduce these to your ch child, you want to practice these when they're not escalated and not upset. Because sometimes when a child's very upset, the last thing they want to do is have you start to show them this visual cue. So you practice, you role play, you model it for them, and then cue them when they're getting upset with as little verb verbiage as possible. You can just point to this. Um, and hopefully your child will be able to apply that when they're upset. Um, a lot of our parents Monday really liked these. These actually um, in the school where I just came from, we had these outside of classrooms on the wall and the students, it's a self-soothing strategy, but it gives a visual of what it is I need to do. So they trace, for example, in the triangle, they trace up as they breathe in, they trace down as they're holding their breath, and trace across the bottom with their finger as they breathe out. And you can do it with these different shapes. Um, but once the students learn to do this, we even had them kind of down the hall as like a little little court, a little walk, calming walk. So they would stop at one, complete it, take a little walk, stop at the next one. I would even see students in the cafeteria tracing these shapes with their finger on the table or at recess outside tracing it in the air. Um, it's simple, but it was very powerful. We did want to um, sh just sh take your attention to the Harford County Public School web page that has some information for early childhood education. You can access this through the hcps.org um, and look up early childhood education, and you can find resources for family and community support, for mental and physical health, and education. This is just a reminder of the sessions that were available tonight. And in the chat box, we did have an evaluation that you could complete um, for your last session. All right, so the last thing I wanna do is I just wanna share with you a couple of the resources that um, I use to, to find these visual supports. Um, so this first one is our CEPHAL website. And this is something um, that, that many of our preschool and early childhood providers in the county use. It's the Center on the Social and Emotional Foundations for Early Learning. And there are many, many resources. If you scroll down here, you see there's a family page. There's also a teacher page. If you go to the teacher page, you'll see right up here, those are where you can find some of those social stories, as well as some other information about social emotional skills and be, um, behavior support as well. So this is a great resource and it's completely free. Um, one of the other resources, let me just pull it up. There we go is Victories in Autism. And this is a, a website that I found. It's 
completely free and they have cue cards for all these areas, communication, schedule, self-management. So for example, this is the communication and behavior card. If I scroll down, you can download a number of these visual cues. But I will say that when possible for especially very young children, if you're able to take a picture of the actual object or use the actual object, use the actual snack wrapper, use the actual toy um, that I want to choose from, the more concrete you make it, um, that's where how our, our very youngest learners, how they acquire skills, making it very concrete. And then you can move, um, once they really understand it, you can move to some of these pictures as well. And finally, this last one that we included the resource for lesson picks, um, there is a fee for this. It's $36 for the year, um, but if anyone's interested, it does have over 40,000 symbols. You can also upload your own photos to these to create some of these cues we were talking about. Um, it's a wonderful website and Hartford County Public Schools has, has begun using it as well. So I hope you were able to take away at least you know one thing that you can start working with your child in the home um, as a teacher i found visual supports so su so powerful in the classroom and i believe we've talked today about a lot of ways they would really be helpful in the home um, helping our children to facilitate their communication to follow directions and to help increase their independence in those family routines that they're participating in home. Thank you for joining us. And if you have any questions, my um, email address is in the chat and I'm happy to answer any questions you have. Thank you.